If you love Gina K Designs, raise your hand. Hey everyone, it's Kathy Zilski. Welcome back to my channel and my studio. Today I am playing with the Gina K Designs Stamp Timber Exclusive for 2023. Now, historically, Gina's collaborations with Simon Says Stamp sell out. They sell like hotcakes. They're going like water through a sieve. I hope you're one of the lucky ones that manages to score Gina's exclusive release. However, even if you don't, I hope you can take some of the ideas that I'm sharing in the video today for your next card project, especially the idea of having a large stamp, but shifting it off to one side. To see that holiday card project stick around, it's coming up next. Also, if you just want to just skip the whole thing, just look in the description, click the link and see if there are any left. That's what I would do. And then come back. Here's a look at the Gina K Designs and Simon Says Stamp Stamp Timber collaboration. Now, this is a stamp set that once it sells out, it is gone. But even if this stamp set is no longer available when you see my video, the idea I'm sharing today is a really fun way to take an oversized stamp and have some fun with it. So we are going to get started with stamping. I have some embossing ink, some embossing powder from Gina and some red velvet cardstock also from Gina K Designs. Let me grab my Misty and we'll start stamping. So as you can see, this is a really big image. Now I have my larger Misty and I also have my grip mat in here. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to come right to the edge. So there's just a little bit going off the card here. And I think I will keep it mostly in the center just to get that stamp right off of the edge. And I am going to stamp this onto the cardstock and emboss it in gold. Now I'm rubbing my fingers over the stamp to prime it. I'm going to use some anti-static powder today. This is from Simon Says Stamp. And I'll just powder up my cardstock here. You can kind of see it start to show up just so that I get rid of any static or oil that is on the cardstock. And it will make my embossing powder only stick to where the embossing ink is. I've got my clear embossing ink from Simon Says Stamp. And I'm just going to ink up right to where I know it's going to bleed off. I don't have to have the whole thing stamped. And then I can clean all of this off of the grip mat as well once I'm done. Okay, I'm gonna bring this down and I'm going to use my stamp press tool. And this just lets me transfer in a way that feels really comfortable on my wrists. All right, let's take a look at our image. Oh my gosh, that looks fantastic. I'm going to go ahead and add my powder because this is good to go. I've got my little embossing clothespin, which just keeps my fingernails and hands from getting too hot. And here's what we're going to do. We're going to sprinkle on, this is Gina K Designs Fine Detail Gold Powder. We're just going to go right here and let that sit for a second and tap off. Now, as I heat this, it is really going to come alive. So let me funnel this back in and then I will get my heat tool warmed up and melt the powder. All right, now I have this really pretty embossed panel and I am going to let this cool for just a second and then I'll just brush off the extra anti-static powder with a cloth. What I'm going to do is just line up a circle die and this is from my Waffle Flower Additional Circles and I'm gonna cut a circle out of here knowing that it's gonna be right on the edge and I'll trim that off in just a second. But let me run this through my die cut machine. All right, and now I have cut this out of the center here and I don't need this anymore. Now I'm going to just trim this panel down a little bit before figuring out the rest of the card. And actually to do that, I'm going to grab my most used die set, my A2 layers dies, 
so that I can take a crop right about there. How cute is that? Okay, so we've got a nice crop looking pretty straight and I'm gonna go ahead and run this through as well to trim this down a little further. And now I have exactly the panel that I want for my note card. All right, let's move on. For the next part of this card, I want to position a greeting, my holidays. Let's see here. I'm gonna take this off and I want the holidays to extend right to the edge while still getting a little bit of the H in there. And actually, yeah, I think that will be okay. Let me put that, oh, it just slid. Let me see if I hold this over the top. Holidays is gonna be nestled right in there and I think that will work just fine. So I'm gonna stamp holidays first and then I'm gonna put a little powder on my embossing powder so that I can actually see where to put the happy and I'm going to throw on a few snowflakes as well. So let's stamp this part first. Inking this up with embossing ink. I'm gonna bring this down and press to transfer. I'm not pressing too hard, but I wanna make sure that I do get all the way to the end, right? And let it transfer like that. Now I'm picking this panel up and this panel, the reason I wanted to do it on a separate panel is so that, so that I didn't have warping issues because that can really happen with embossing right onto a note card like that. Well, that looks great. All right. So let's open this back up. And I'm also not too worried if I get powder, embossing powder on my tool here because this can, this grip mat can be taken out and washed, which I have done uh, quite a few times actually. All right, I want to have a nice little happy. And then I'm just gonna take a few snowflakes, get them as close as I can, maybe right there first. I think I'll do those two first and just see how that looks. Pick them up. This is kind of a fun alternative when you don't have dies. Now there are coordinating dies available for this exclusive, but I am just working with the stamps today and it's kind of fun to challenge yourself in how can you work in all these little stamps. There's so many beautiful stamps in this set and I'm making sure the snowflakes transfer well and that looks pretty good. So let's pick this up. And again, we're going to repeat the process. See how these guys look. Oh, that looks pretty. Okay, so now we've got our snowflakes stamped in place. And I think what I will do, let me hold this here because I'm just trying to visualize. I think I have room for one more snowflake. I like the idea of three right back in. And then I'm going to say, we're gonna squeeze you right in there. And here, one more. And then we'll put our final round of powder on and I can do any cleanup that I need to do. All right, great. And now I will sprinkle on a little more powder, just get a nice coating there. I am going to use, where is my craft pick? My little craft pick so that I can clean up some detail on the happy because the happy got a little, I, I pressed a little too hard on it. And then here, all I'm gonna do, I'm gonna be very careful, I'm gonna take the pick side and just drag into that Y a little because I had it a bit globby. That looks better. You can always do that. And then if you have really mess it up, which I have done that before, you can just pour more powder on it and start again. All right, now we're gonna melt this powder. Right. 
So now I have my greeting, which has been embossed. Now it's a little warpy, right? You can see that, but I'm gonna pop it into a book and then once everything is nice and straight, my greeting is going to be housed in here. While I was waiting for this to flatten out a bit, I went ahead and stamped the bird and I did some fussy cutting. Now, fussy cutting is not, it's not my strong suit, but then again, that is not bad, right? It's a little bird and I'm gonna see how it looks popped here onto the card. However, the first thing we have to do is I've got a note card here that I've already created. Now this is 80 pound weight. And the reason I went with a lighter weight is because this is a heavier weight and that is going to be all I need, right? For a nice note card base. However, this is still a little warped. So I'm going to use my Gina K Designs tape runner and just add tape all over the back. That way, this is gonna stay nice and tight to the card. I try to get it as close to the edge as possible because I really do want this to stay nice and flat. So I am an over adhesor and uh, you know, some, oh, I think I just ran out. This is the best timing ever. Okay, I like to use my score buddy to do this or you can use anything with an edge or misty as well but this just lets you line up your note card very quickly and perfectly on top of the card base and then i can go ahead and just give this a good press down to really adhere it and now i have my panel adhered to my note card and the warping not as noticeable all right now we can take the foam tape off the back and you'll see I've done a lot to support that circle just so that that would not fall apart. So let me get all these backers off. I'm going to use a little liquid glue first because this is a little, you know, if it sticks in the wrong place, I'm not going to be happy. So <laughs> I'd like to do this just to have a little float time before I press too hard with my foam tape. Plus it's a little harder to see this with the circle cut out, so forgive my head if it gets in the way. Right there. Oh, I love how this peeks out from underneath. Isn't that fun? Now I used thin foam squares on this because I wasn't 100% sure how high up I wanted it popped. So I used a thinner foam square like that. Now, this is what I'm not 100% sure. Where do I want to place him? And actually, I think I'm gonna grab him by the head. This is why I love tweezers because they let you, well, they let you kind of peek out a little. I like the idea that a little of him is poking into both the circle and the margin. And isn't that cute how he's just leading you in, right? Cause look at all that good shine. Ooh. All right. Now I think I'm going to have to add just a little bit of something shiny. So I've got some gold pearls and let me see what kind of, oh, you know what though? I actually think satin pearls might look better with this card project. Let me take a look. Sometimes I like to try both because the gold powder is a nice, oh, you know what? Yeah, I think the shinier gold ones are gonna work better because I just thought I would zooch this up a little, although this has a nice warmth to it. Boy, I don't think I could go wrong either way, but I think what I will do is I will look through all of my pearls here and get a similar size for each little friend. Now I don't know, I didn't plan this in advance, so I'm not sure. That's a little too big. Sometimes I just have to dump more out to get the size I want, and honestly, sometimes I just dump them over here because it's actually very easy to scoop them into these trays to pour them back in. Oh, and this is nice, because that's gonna hit right there. Oh, this is an afterthought, but I, think this is so fun. All right, let's get you on the right side. There we go. Right in here, right here. Oh, 
gosh, this is pretty. Now here's the thing. Would you would you mass produce this? I don't know. You know, I I, I make special cards for special people. You know, sometimes, well, for my crafty friends, I don't mass produce, but look at how fun that is. Ooh, okay. So let's go ahead and take our connect glue and we'll just pick each one up with the tiniest bit of glue to hold it. And whoop, come here, right in the center. Whoop. Really like this. Was, didn't want to stick there for a second. Oh my goodness. This set will sell out, but again, as Gina does every year. But what I hope you can take away from it is if you have a very large image, don't be afraid to crop part of it off and find a way to play with it and make it kind of fit a smaller space, if that makes sense. Yeah, I really like that. Boop. And the last one here, and just, I think, by luck, boop. that's an odd number. We have seven, and I prefer odd numbers, but that is the finished card. So we have a little bling, we have a bird, we have happy holidays extending off, I hope. I hope this inspires you. I hope those of you who managed to score this stamp set love it as much as I do. And for those of you who miss out on it once it sells out, I hope you can take inspiration from this design with the products you have on hand. You can find links to everything I used in today's video in the YouTube description box. If you're not a subscriber to my channel, I would love to have you, so hit that subscribe button and hit the notification bell so that you don't miss the next time I post. Thanks so much for watching and have a great day. For more ideas for Christmas, check out the two thumbnails I have linked for you below and I'll see you in those videos.